Hello, Donation. Here we are coming to you on another Friday for Noonday Prayer. And we're here to tell you we survived our uh, vaccines and sitting waiting for our next round of snow. So that's Colorado for you. Let us do Noonday Prayer. Page 103 in your Book of Common Prayer. And your psalm is page is not Psalm 95 on page 82. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. And the reading. Psalm 85, 95? 95, the Benite. Okay, that's right. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout with joy for the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And our reading today comes from Luke's Gospel, and we will be focusing on the prodigal son. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion and ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for his for this son of mine was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and they began to celebrate the word of the lord thanks be, be to, to god, god. No doubt you recognize the parable of the prodigal son, and you're quick to realize that we didn't finish it. 
I want to deal with uh, each character at a time in a series through the rest of Fridays in Lent. And so far in Lent, I've reflected on this journey towards Holy Week uh, through the metaphorical idea of setting our face with Jesus to go up to Jerusalem and in taking up our cross and following Jesus. And so today I want to begin exploring this parable of the prodigal and how it might inform this idea of setting our face to go up to Jerusalem. Um, for the remaining five Sundays, I want to look at the characters uh, one at a time and how their journeys speak to the journey of Lent. Can we find parallels to our work of repentance, to our work of examination of a cruciform relationship with God and with one another in this timeless story? I've said before that Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of a journey calling us to mirror Jesus's determination, his commitment as he set his face to go up to Jerusalem. And with that in mind, let's look at the par parable of the prodigal journey. The story begins at a point in the life of the young man setting off on a journey. This determined young man asks for and is granted his inheritance. And he gathers up all he has and sets his face towards a distant country. Now what first stands out for me this time in hearing this story, I hear it a little different each time I read this story. What stands out for me is separation. I'm hearing a journey away from rather than a journey towards something. And a distant country seems to emphasize this separation, this awayness as I hear it this time. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. Well, when he realizes that he's out of money, he's hit rock bottom, he determines to go home and face his father. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. And he sets his face toward home. Now, poet and philosopher David White wrote that the ability to turn your face towards home is one of the great human endeavors and the great human stories. And I think that's because separation is debilitating and movement away from takes its toll on relationships. And our wandering son faces towards home, preparing speeches and, and anticipating how it will be when he finally reaches the father's house. Treat me like one of your hired hands, he says. He's come to think of the movement towards home in terms of earning, deserving, and rewarding. How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare? A quick reading of this sounds like contrition, right? It sounds like he's contrite. Well, our friend Henry Nowen calls this self-serving repentance, a repentance that offers the possibility of survival. It's kind of like saying, well, I, I couldn't make it on my own. I have to acknowledge that God is the only resource left to me. You know, by now we've figured out the father figure here represents God. And self-serving repentance does nothing to resolve the separation. The Father, God, remains a harsh, judgmental God. And this vision of God makes me feel guilty and worried 
and calls up in me all these self-serving apologies. Submission to this God doesn't create true inner freedom, but breeds bitterness and resentment. But the parable says, the old man surprises the returning son by running out to meet him. This dishonored father running to meet the boy who did him wrong. That's the good news of the story we have before us today. While he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. This son of mine was dead and is now alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. And here is where separation is resolved. A dishonored father runs out to say, I'm forgiving you before the son can begin his prepared speech. Self-serving repentance doesn't even reach home before the true repentance rushes out to receive him. And that's where true repentance usually begins, not before the pardon, but following the pardon. There's no doubt that forgive, there's no doubt what forgiveness looks like, nor how much it costs. The returning son lives endearing, lives entirely by his father's grace. Rabbinic literature tells the parable in a lot fewer words, more concisely. It tells it like this. The king had a son who had gone astray from his father on a journey. His friends said to him, return to your father. He said, I cannot. Then the father sent word, return as far as you can and I will come the rest of the way to you. God says, return to me, and I will return to you. For the rabbis, the challenge is not in seeing God's love in a new way. The inevitable challenge in every religious system is to get the wayward to return, to resolve the separation. God does not give up, does not give in to separation. To the contrary, God is waiting for us always to repent and to return. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, as you were talking, I had two images. One was uh, Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel, where God is reaching yes, out mm -hmm. to touch man. And then the other is um, what you've been talking about in the, the cross and mm. the son reaching up and the father reaching down. Mm. And, and our work of reaching out to one another. Reaching out. Well, let us uh, continue with our prayers. All right. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to lead and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. And now let us uh, bring our prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings to God silently or loud or written into the uh, comments on Facebook. We'll begin with our um, parish prayer list, those who have asked for our prayers. Shannon Briotti, James Hines, Albert Ayaga, Dean Rogers, Emily, Michael Murphy, Uncle Lanny, Sarah Hill, that's Mary's sister, and Eve Poteet, that's our daughter-in-law, for Sabrina Wade, Maria Swift, Ruth Rudolph, Rick and Robert Williamson, Mike Donovan, Jess Martin, Cindy Bixby, Arden Reed, Cindy O'Connor, Jorge and Marie Sayers, Meg Pritchard, Carvel Taylor, Jessica Williamson, Jane Rodriguez, Lee Putzig, Stan Hopkins, Cliff Lewis, our friends and parishioners of Atlantic Shores and Westminster Canterbury and Bay Lake Assisted Living, that they would be safe from COVID. For Hope Matthews, Diane Shipper, Brian Hunt, and Heather Haying Hunt. For Brian Miller and his brother Ray, Meredith Guzman, Julius Ventura, Howard Hanchi, Forrest Newhall, Linda Erickson, Amy, Pam Campbell, and Elizabeth Malcolm, Ruth Ann, Donna Blankenship Hudgens, Carol Hart, Bill Thompson, Joe Hughes, Martha Gentry, Frank, Kelly, Gabe, and Gio, Alan and Carol Ormond. And we remember all students and teachers and parents as they struggle in schools and education and homeschooling and, and remote learning. We pray for victims of racial injustice, for an end to violence, for God's vision of a beloved community to become our vision for this world, for peace in our nation and the world. We pray for deployed persons everywhere, for medical and emergency personnel, for scientists working on solutions for COVID-19, and especially those involved in the distribution of vaccinations. And we give thanks for having completed both vaccinations ourselves. And with that, we have some celebrations today. We do, we do, along with prayers going out to everyone on our list. We have prayers for people who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Birthdays today, Jane Robinson, Susan Rule, Jonathan Teeling, Heidi Stanley, and Sandra Wills. Happy all have birthday. birthday. So blessings on all and for your year to come. And anniversaries today, we have David and Pamela Bowles, who are important members of the gathering band so mm -hmm. we wish them the best with their anniversary and many more to come happy anniversary and thanks for all you do in making music for old donation true well let us bless the lord thanks be to god the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all evermore amen amen We'll look forward to seeing you again Friday. If you would, read the parable of the prodigal son. It's in Luke chapter 15. And we'll continue uh, with the older son and the father and how all that fits into our uh, Lenten journey. We'll see you again on Friday. God bless. Bye.